Story 1, Our Dutch Shepherd There were intruders in the house. They locked the dogs in the kitchen so they could rob the house. But our Dutch Shepherd, Max, knew how to open doors. So he did. He came upstairs and woke everyone up by licking our faces. Intruders got interrupted and could only take two piggy banks instead of two cars, the television, and all of my dad's musical instruments, along with all of the other expensive items he needs as a musician. Max even led the police to the place where the thieves hid all of my dad's instruments. He made it to the newspaper. Story 2. My Gentle Giant of Golden Retriever. He was the absolute sweetest, gentlest, most non-aggressive dog ever. One evening, a man came to the door. The dog, of course, was first to greet him. This dog was wagging all over, smiling, the whole so happy to meet a new friend thing he always did. As soon as I reached the door, the man asked if my husband was home. My dog went nuts, growling, barking, lunging at the door. That dude turned and ran. I never saw him again, and my dog never acted that way again. He's been gone for 23 years now, and I still miss him every day. Story 3 My mom was in a parking lot late one night when I was a baby. It was dark and cold outside. I was in the baby seat. She got out to walk around the car to get me, and three guys started heckling her, saying aggressively sexual things towards her, and started walking towards her. She told them she was alone with a baby and to leave her alone. One guy said, We don't care. The kid can watch, and was on the opposite side of the car at that point. Mom opened the door and our Norwegian elk hound, who she said was as quiet as could be the whole time, which is weird because they are barkers, lying on the seat next to my baby's seat, flew out of the car. She said she had never heard him snarl, bark, or drool at the mouth like he was, and he took off after the two guys. One guy stayed across the parking lot. She said he sounded like a demon and was snapping at them as he ran at them. One guy turned and yelled, Jesus, is that a wolf? As he ran, Kai stopped after about 10 feet and came back to my mom, who by that point had gotten in the car, locked the doors, and sat next to the car wagging and panting like he had just played ball with my dad. She sat there for a couple of minutes until she could tell they were gone, hopped out, let Kai in, and took off. She was shocked by the men, but just as much by our sweet family furball, as she always put it. I think he got a stomach ache that night from all the treats he got when we got home. Ha! Ah, the family never had any other kind of dog after that. Lots of elk hounds. Even after we grew up and moved out, my parents always had at least one elk hound until they passed away in their 80s. Story 4 My Great Dane Did Two men pulled up all the way behind our farmhouse where no one usually parks. It's not even near the front door. They came in through the back shed and then into the summer kitchen, which was attached to the indoor kitchen with only a door in between. I could hear them out there rifling through things. I got the dog, stood in the kitchen by the door, and sure enough, they started to turn the handle to come into the house. My Dane started to low growl. The guy opens up the door, sees my dog, and starts to stutter. I say, what the hell are you doing? Oh, nothing, lady. Just looking for antiques. I told him to get out. My neighbor down the road had called the police, and my dog is going to go after you. Get out. He did. The size of that dog and his protectiveness saved me. Those two were just coming right on into the house with me in there. All the lights were on. They had to know someone was home. Story 5. My Labrador is my guide dog. Electric cars don't make noise, so I don't always know they are there. My guide dog has stopped me more than once from walking in front of a silent car. Story 6. My aunt's Doberman protected her from a carjacking in Panama in the 1980s. The man didn't see Sorpresa in the back seat when he approached my aunt's window with his gun. She bit the tip of his nose clean off. There has never been a more aptly named dog, as Sorpresa is Spanish for surprise. Story 7. My dachshund stopped my brother and me from approaching a coral snake when we were four and six. She kept charging us while barking and growling, and pushed me down before going and barking at the snake until my parents got there. Story 8. My dad used to have a Great Dane. Once, an intruder tried breaking into his place by smashing the kitchen window, and his horse of a dog grabbed onto the thief's hand as it reached for the handle and shook the thief around. 
The broken glass and violent pulling by a 40-kilogram dog almost dismembered the thief. Story 9. Some tan mutt from the desert. When I was a baby, my mom and I were playing in my grandparents' backyard. My mom had come in to help bring out some food for an outdoor lunch when my grandfather spotted a feral dog growling and barking at me. He always said the scariest moment of his life was seeing that feral dog start running at me. As my family scrambled to get back outside to grab me, a tan dog came in from the other side of the yard, bolted past me, and intercepted the attacking dog, giving my family enough time to grab me and get back inside. That tan mutt completely saved my life and was soon adopted by my grandparents. I grew up with that dog, and I was always his favorite human. I miss that dog so much. Story 10. One evening, I was home alone when I heard someone trying to open my back door. Buddy started barking like crazy and ran to the door. The noise scared off whoever was trying to get in. Story 11. We had two Dobermans. If my kids were outside playing and my wife or I was outside with them, the dogs were very docile toward any visitors. However, if the kids were playing in our backyard and neither parent was outside, the dogs would not let anyone near the kids without being told that it was okay. Story 12. When I was a kid in the 1980s, our German shepherds might have saved my mom's life. My dad took me on an overseas trip, and she stayed home for work reasons. At the time, we lived deep in the sticks on a mountain in rural Appalachia, surrounded by woods. My mom was gardening, and some guy just came out of the woods. He claimed he was looking for a lost sheep or something, but the nearest farms were a mile away plus 500 vertical feet below us, a difficult climb through thick woods. Though we occasionally got farm animals coming through, he might have been telling the truth. But this guy was acting suspiciously and kept staring at her chest but also beyond her. She said it was a look she'd never seen before. Like he wasn't focusing on her but looking through her. He kept getting closer even when she told him to leave and kept asking if her husband was home. The dogs were going utterly nuts inside. My mom was too far to outrun him to the house, and the nearest neighbors were like an eighth of a mile away. Maybe they'd hear screams if they were outside, but probably not if they were inside. The door didn't latch well unless you locked it from inside, and at some point, the two female German shepherds nosed it open and got loose. The first one charged right at him, hackles up, bubbles of spit, low growling, urinating all over the place in fear and rage. She was peeing while running and utterly coated her belly. The second ran sideways and disappeared behind the right side of the house. My mom said she remembered thinking, at least one of these dogs isn't a coward. The guy was intimidated but didn't leave. He kept yelling at her to put the dog up. After 30 seconds, my mom noticed the second dog stalking around the far corner of the house. The guy had his back partially to her. She had run around the entire half-acre fenced-in garden and appeared behind him. She stalked closer and closer until she was like 20 feet away. Then some invisible signal between the two started the attack. The first dog charged at the guy, wildly snapping but not actually connecting. As the guy stumbled backward and kicked at her head, the second dog leaped at his back from behind. She connected and he fell forward onto his belly. Then the first dog went for his arm while the second went for the back of his neck. My mom grabbed her by the collar and pulled her off before she really got a good grip and tore the guy to pieces. He got up and just walked back into the woods in the direction of nothing, never saying anything. She called my dad crying, then her girlfriends who came and spent the night. The county sheriff came but found nothing. We never saw the guy again. I didn't hear the story until I was older. It was totally obvious on the trip. I guess it was instinct on the part of the dogs because neither dog ever had any training of any kind. I'm pretty sure she would have been assaulted if the dogs weren't there. Maybe worse. I'm also pretty sure the dog would have killed him in seconds if my mom didn't intervene. We've had German shepherds ever since. Six generations now. Story 13. My border collie saved me from a crazy stalker who was attacking me. She has scars from it, but so does he. Unfortunately, I had to retire her from being a service dog afterward. It turned the protective switch on in her mind, and now she will growl at men she doesn't know who are anywhere near my daughter or me. She'll remain my wonderful pet, but service dogs don't get to growl at people. Story 14. 
not me specifically, but we had a few small dogs when I was growing up, and we lived in an area rife with coyotes. Our Australian shepherd saved their lives more than once. I remember one time the little dogs got out at night, and we were awakened by absolutely blood-curdling noises out in the back of the property. Our Australian shepherd ran out, and when we found him ten minutes later, he was absolutely covered in blood. It wasn't his. Rest in peace, George. You were a magnificent dog, pack leader, and friend for a little boy. Story 15. Not me. But my Westy Cross stood between my ten-year-old kid and two agitated bigger dogs to protect him. She held her ground until I arrived too. She and my kid are best friends. Story 16. Shetland Sheepdog alerted us to a chimney fire 10 to 15 minutes before the fire alarms did. That extra time got all living people and pets out of the house. If we hadn't woken up until the fire alarm went off, we would all have had some degree of smoke inhalation injuries. Story 17. I live in the country and had a young man stop at our house once and ask for gas. I have been stranded like that once before, so I didn't doubt or give him trouble. I had a full gas can in the garage for the mower and figured I owed karma for help I've been given before. But I am a cautious person, so I put my dog on a leash and had him walk with me to the garage to get the gas can for this kid. Just for your information, I have country bumpkin dogs that don't often go on the leash anywhere and are very used to and are friendly to visitors. When I put my dog on the leash and we walked out of the house, it was like he was this amazing leash-trained super pup. He walked right on my heel between me and the stranger, all the way across the driveway to the garage and back. He didn't greet the guy or sniff or anything. He was all business. Got the kid his gas and that was that. Not really an exciting story or a real threat. The kid was just legitimately out of gas. But I was so surprised and proud of how my dog behaved. Like I said, friendly country bumpkin dog, not a stoic guard dog. When it was all done, he went back to sleeping on the couch, weenies up. Bumpkin once again. Story 18. Our 90-pound Rottweiler has severe anxiety issues, but multiple times at the dog park when aggressive dogs have approached my wife, she jumps in front and uses her big girl bark. Once the other dog backs off, she will curl her tail and hide behind us. She's scared, but she overrides it to protect mom. Story 19. My 95-pound shelter dog, who is a mix of many breeds, protected me from two cats fighting each other. I was in no real danger, but he did stand next to me and bark at them until they left. He was really proud, too. Story 20. I'll go first. My Australian Shepherd and Golden Retriever mix. My friend and I, female, 19 then, were at Bagby Hot Springs, and a creepy man approached us, asking to join us in the hot tub. My dog, Charlie, ignored him the first time when we told him no, and he left. When he came back, Charlie rose up out of the shadow of the tub with hackles raised all down his back, snarling. The guy left really quickly. I suspect that Charlie picked up on our unease with this guy's behavior. Felt great having that backup in a remote area. He was a gentle and discerning dog. I was pleased to see Australian Shepherds on the American Kennel Club list of good protection dogs. Story 21. When I was a little kid, maybe nine years old, I was playing basketball in front of our garage and our neighbor's dog got loose. He was a big German Shepherd mix and was mean as all hell. They beat him and did whatever else they could to make him mean and hate people so he'd be a good guard dog. As soon as I noticed him, I had to decide what to do, and right as I was about to turn and run, my dog came running past me to get between us. She was a Springer Spaniel and probably weighed 40 pounds, half of what the other dog weighed, and just went berserk. She kept between us and made awful noises, puffing herself up, and any time he tried to get by her, she jumped in his way. When he tried to attack her, she was too fast, and every time he'd go for a bite, she'd lunge out of the way and then bite him on the ears, cheek, or neck. After about three times around with each other, the other dog stopped advancing, and my dog backed me up through the fence gate into the yard until I could close the gate. She was a great dog, and I don't know how she didn't get seriously hurt. Story 22. Chihuahua. A miniature teacup chihuahua, literally the size of a guinea pig. Her bark is absolutely pathetic, and her growl is even worse. I was waiting to take her to the veterinarian, and it was cold, 
so I waited in my car just outside. A guy was parking beside me on my side. He was getting dangerously close, so I called out to him. He ignored me and continued until I honked my horn. He got out and became very confrontational. I tried to stay calm, but he became more aggressive. This tiny little chew toy in my lap jumped up onto the window and growled at him in his face. It was brave of her, but the noise was pitiful, and this guy jumped back and dropped a metal rod I hadn't seen he had. He screamed that I set my vicious, savage wolf on him. A security guard broke everything up, but afterward, he came up to me to see if my dog was all right since she was shaking. While making a fuss over her, he asked where my other dog was, the one who scared the guy off. He nearly wet himself laughing when I told him it was her. Story 23. English Mastiff. Honestly, he may have been a super pushy salesman, but he could have been a burglar. People have said they are with security companies before to gain access to homes. A guy came to the door and said he was with Vivint Security. When told we were not interested, he tried to open the door and push past to enter the house. Q215 pounds of Mastiff making his presence known, quietly and non-aggressively, but a dog that size is pretty intimidating just by existing. The dude pretty much booked it out of there. The cops were called but did not find him.